Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. So happy to have uh, so many people here already, even though that's super early. Uh, that actually means that this um, Gitcoin round is very popular. And I think that today we're going to be able to touch base in different points that a lot of us um, are curious about to know uh, about this Gitcoin Alpha round. But before we start, I would love everyone to uh, present yourselves, to talk a little bit about your projects. Um, so let's start with Tam, which was the first, the first one that joined. Cool. Okay. Um, so we actually have two grants, Common Stack and a second one. And I really want to focus on the second one today on this call. Uh, and the grant is to get an exciting new joint venture started with Common Stack and Refi DAO. We want to get it off the ground. And I'll just take 30 seconds to tell you what we want to do. Uh, we want to accelerate the growth of the Refi movement, but we want to do it from the bottom up. So um, we're planning to pilot a new concept called a Refi Commons. They're regional commons supporting regenerative finance of communities in their own backyard. To do this, we want to work together to build a Refi Commons incubator. Uh, that incubator will provide strategic support, tooling, and know-how to those regional commons. And how to know which regions are ready to get this started? Well, we're planning to launch a Refi Commons prize, uh, which will allow regions to self-nominate and demonstrate that they meet the requirements um, in order to be successful to you know, start taking the steps to, to launching a commons. We hope to pilot three regions simultaneously. So there are three chances for any region anywhere in the world to have the chance to launch their own refi commons. This is the grant I'm really going to focus on today. Uh, and Shana, I'll pass to uh, I'll pass back to you. Thank you. Um, great to have you here. So excited of this partnership. Uh, and then I think uh, Pranav was the next one that joined the space. Hey, Pranav, welcome. Can you please introduce yourself and the projects that you're representing in this round? Yep. Thank you so much. Hi, Pranav Khanna here, speaking to you from Mumbai, India. I'm here representing Lower Labs, Refi by South. You'll see the handle as one of the listeners in the space. Refi by South is essentially focused on localizing Refi conversations in the Global South. We are all about education, about empowering uh, folks to evangelize, to become Refi ambassadors. We are also about focusing on interoperability between projects here uh, in the Global South and uh, uh, folks out there who are looking to connect with the Global South around language, token, and code. And I think that really captures the essence of what Refi by South wants to be, is to be a facilitator and enabler, uh, and just essentially help surface all of the good work that is happening in the Global South. So yeah, look us up at Refi by South. I'll stop there. Thank you, Pranab. Always great to listen to you in all of the uh, Gitcoin Twitter spaces. Uh, and then let's let's uh, leave Ben at the end because he's representing Gitcoin today. So I'd love to to actually start the question with you. But before, uh, Griff, can you uh, introduce yourself and which projects are you representing in this Twitter space in this round? Sure. Yeah, I'm Griff Green. I, I've been down real hard since 2015. And um, I have a I have a few projects, of course. Uh, also representing Common Stack, uh, but uh, I'll promise I'll let Tam take that one up, and I'll focus mostly on Gimmick, uh, which you know we're we're a, a a donation platform as well, kind of like very similar to Gitcoin, and we hope that with the funds from this grant that we'll actually be able to be even more similar with Gitcoin now that uh, the QF powers are being decentralized, we could even integrate quadratic funding directly into the app. Uh, but Gimmith is always here for in those in-between times when Gitcoin isn't isn't doing around. Uh, do you want to support support your favorite nonprofit projects? Gimmith is there to hold it down uh, and this project can raise funds 24-7. And the craziest thing is that donors actually get rewarded when they donate. Uh, we give out gift tokens. It's like donation mining. It's like if Bitcoin rewarded people who donated uh, with their tokens instead of rewarding the security of the network. That's what we basically built, and we are uh, in the public good space. It's always it's always tough to get funding, so we're still definitely pushing for donations to so that we can uh, be the best uh, you know Web3 donation platform in the world. We want to integrate NFTs this year. We want to integrate quadratic funding, and we want to turn our nonprofits into DAOs and make them regenerative in, the, in their own. So that's what we're working towards. 
I'll pass back to you. Ollie. Thank you, Griff. Um, I think that I catch most of everything uh, that you say, but it's, I don't know, your audio is kind of like robotic. So uh, maybe if you can uh, check your your internet. But yeah, I think that I catch mostly everything that you mentioned. And then let's go with uh, Ben. Ben, great to have you. Thank you for coming. Um, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, thrilled to be here. Thanks. Um, my name is Ben West. Um, I'm the Cause Rounds lead for Gitcoin. Uh, it's a real honor and a privilege to be in that role uh, and thrilled to be here with uh, with the Giveth Galaxy folks. Um, big fan of Giveth. Uh, you know, feel like we're brothers in arms in the uh, uh, in the in the Web three. Uh, public good space. Um, just for the sake of saying it, uh, I, I just want to acknowledge the territory that I'm on. Uh, might be a little bit weird for for a Web3 thing because we're all in the metaverse, but uh, I'm here in Toronto, which is the uh, territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, Anishinaabe, Chippewa, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples. Uh, I've done a lot of work uh, in and around Indigenous communities, and uh, it's just important to me to sort of recognize where I am. Um, and I just want to share my love with uh, with everybody else on stage, uh, uh, in particular my my homie Pranav, uh, who I work with on the uh, on the climate rounds and have been for for over a year now. Uh, one of the people doing tons of work behind the scenes that often doesn't get seen. So I just want to uh, uh, raise my hands to you, sir. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me here. I was super excited to to talk about the what's going on with with Gitcoin and Giveth, and uh, love uh, this discussion of like Giveth using QF and you know how the membranes between our our different uh, uh, spaces uh, will kind of get thinner and thinner and, and sort of merge more and more, uh, which I, I think has already been the case for for many years. Uh, you know, really predating my time at, at Gitcoin, but uh, you know, really excited to see where this goes. Uh, you know, as uh, as Gitcoin becomes more decentralized and Giveth continues to grow and evolve. Uh, very cool to see. Thank you, Ben. So great to have you. Uh, and yeah, I agree. Uh, Pranav was one of my top of minds to invite to this Twitter space to clarify also a lot of questions because I know that uh, he's an OG on, on this topic. And so welcome everyone uh, again to this Twitter space in which we want to clarify why is this Gitcoin Alpha round different? Why does it matter to all of us, to all our projects? And also um, we, we're going to be interacting with this with these people, uh, with different projects, friends of Giveth, uh, with have with experience in this Gitcoin rounds. So also please feel free to ask questions between uh, between you. Uh, and I also want to mention that this is not precisely a space to trial other uh, Gitcoin um, grants and projects. Uh, this is more to, to talk about why is this uh, round different. So, but at the end, uh, for sure, we can have a space for questions if you have uh, a question for the people that's up here with me. So let's start. And um, okay, I would like to start with you, Ben. And yeah, the question of uh, the $100, why is this Gitcoin Alpha round different? And how is this actually uh, different from the past rounds? Love it. Um, so this round is actually very different from past rounds. Um, for a grantee, I guess, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're giving away money, uh, you know, so in that sense, it's similar. Um, but this is the first time that Gitcoin has run its own program on this new uh, decentralized version of the Gitcoin grants platform. So, uh, you know, anybody who set up a grant proposal this round would have noticed that they were actually signing uh, you know, a transaction onto blockchain to actually like basically mint their project. Um, and that's something new. Uh, you know, the backbone of everything that we're doing now uh, is decentralized and part of this new protocol. Uh, and this protocol connects various different dApps together. So uh, basically, we we now have a what's currently being called a grants hub where uh, grantees create their grant. Uh, there's a grant explorer where, um, you know, you can see all the grants in a round and go donate to them. Uh, there's a round manager, which is a separate tool for managing the rounds um, and a uh, uh, our passport uh, infrastructure for the sort of digital identity part of what, uh, you know, is a big part of what Gitcoin needs to do uh, uh, because of the model that we've chosen using QF and the need to sort of identify uh, individuals. Um, you know, I'm I'm proud to say that we're, 
part of a system that's kind of, uh, you know, an alternative to government KYC processes, uh, you know, that we are facilitating digital decentralized identity. Uh, now over 120,000 people have set up Gitcoin passports. Um, and it really can be a core building block for uh, for many other things and, and is already being used by Snapshot and, and others. So, I mean, we're, we're really at a big inflection point for Gitcoin in terms of the trajectory it's been on. Uh, of course, uh, you know, Kevin and, and others who were, you know, the, the founders of Gitcoin have been sort of setting us on this trajectory for quite some time. Um, but we're kind of at the place that we've been talking about getting to for a while. And, uh, you know, and I think that matches up with a lot of things happening in, in Web3. You know, a lot of the stuff we talked about for years is sort of becoming more and more of a reality uh, recently, whether you're looking at some of the climate solutions use cases or, um, you know, really the evolution of DAOs uh, in the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, of course, Griff uh, could speak more to sort of the evolution of DAOs than anybody, I'm sure. But it uh it's really interesting to see what that is looking like right now, uh, because we're running our first alpha round where there's just three rounds, uh, you know, so uh, much smaller than in previous rounds. We had, you know, 17 rounds in our last uh, uh, full Gitcoin grants round. Um, and we're also starting to switch to more of an idea of seasons as opposed to just individual grants rounds. Uh, we'll still be running our quarterly programs, but, you know, as Gitcoin's toolkit becomes, uh, you know, fully open source and, uh, you know, forkable, people can run grant rounds anytime they want. So somebody setting up a, a grant on the Grants Hub, uh, you know, could potentially have that round uh, or that grant in multiple different rounds, uh, you know, over a season or throughout a year, uh, you know, could be editing and making changes to it throughout the year. Um, but really, this is like a giant step towards like Gitcoin, uh, you know, really facilitating communities raising money to support their their goals. And, you know, that uh, is is something that I think will have all kinds of implications that we can't even imagine yet. Um, you know, the beauty of open source software is anybody can use it. Anybody can do whatever they want with it. Um, and, you know, it's uh, going to be really, I think, just like uh, amazing to see kind of where these these various different, uh, you know, sort of underlying pieces of tech, these these primitives um, you know, can sort of evolve in what they can facilitate and what they can do. But for this round, we have three different rounds. Uh, there's the climate round, the open source software round, and the ETH infrastructure round. Um, each of them has $333,333.56 for two of them and $0.57 cents for the other. Uh, I'll give a high five to anybody who can do the math and tell me what that means. If you can't do the math, I can just tell you because I am having a hard time not just saying it. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, what you told me already, so I feel like I'm cheating. One million and six, <laughs> one million dollars sixty nine cents. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it had to be done, right? You know, uh, if if you're making a decision how much to put in the round, you you, know, you might as well add sixty nine cents to the end. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what's available for these rounds. Um, you know, and they are much smaller rounds than previous rounds because it's an alpha round. Like this is very much the alpha version of of this new platform. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, uh, we're testing a lot of things. Feedback is super important. If you're seeing bugs or things that you think could be better or different, like really are, we're really trying to make this a community driven process of like, not only the grants rounds themselves, but like determining what's prioritized and what features are, are really important to people. Um, so please don't hesitate if you've got feedback. Uh, if you show up on the Gitcoin discord, somebody will point you towards uh, the feedback form that we've got floating around. Uh, and there's lots of other ways to sort of, you know, if you need support or if you're reporting a bug that we can take action on it quicker. But uh, yeah, that that's really the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, you know, whole new decentralized, uh, you know, new uh, alpha protocol uh, with a whole stack of decentralized tools that are uh, being built uh, by ourselves as well as by partners kind of simultaneously. Um, you know, and uh, I'm just really excited that we're kind of back into the flow of, you uh, you know, helping to support all these amazing projects and, and it was just really, really cool to see all the all the projects in the various rounds that have evolved over the years and, and you know, are continuing to do really awesome things. So it's always exciting when we launch a new round and and sort of see where projects are at and, and sort of hear the latest in their story as they update their grant proposals. I know it's great. It's great also to have great partners to do these tests, uh, season and test rounds as UNICEF, as Phantom, that actually I know that 
um, give it itself and maybe Tam and Pranav also participate in this uh, test rounds that uh, happen. I would love if you can, uh, speaking of feedback, uh, talk about your experience with these test rounds, um, how for you is different from the other rounds, uh, how's been the experience to, to partner with these um, big names as UNICEF? I don't know if Griff, can you talk about um, a little bit your, your, your feedback and experience with these last test rounds? Yeah, they're definitely different. You know, it's uh, it's it's fun. You know, the difference between Web two and Web three is is uh, is is uh, is real. You know, and uh, it's also like it's really become. I, I have a lot of questions, actually, honestly, uh, because I feel like I don't fully understand the user experience yet, and I I also feel like in the alpha stage, it's like it it's uh it it's missing some of the jazz that the that the Web two experience has, and I think that's just because. You know they're launching the features that are there and, and that aren't there and but I, I don't know i i would love to hear from ben on on some of these things like uh at least in the phantom and unicef rounds there wasn't a man matching amount yet i don't know is that like uh, i always loved that i don't know i assume that's still on the on the ballot but it's or like it's in the works right yeah yeah, and I could not agree with you more, Griff, and please continue to say that out loud, because, uh, you know, I, I, to me, that is the secret sauce of what makes Gitcoin's grant platform, you know, really different than than everything else. There's there's lots of other things that make it different, but, like, that one is, like, the big one, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, is seeing the matching amounts in real time that, like, wow, my one die is being matched with 100 die or whatever it might be. Um, you know, and, and then like the kind of interesting game that happens when you start trying to figure out like, okay, well, maybe I'll give like two die to this one and 10 die to that one. Cause like, look, that'll result in this much matching and that'll result in this much matching. Um, it's really just the nature of rolling out a series of features. Like the, 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 the things that were prioritized were like, you know, the security and the like, you know, just stability and like really just core functionality. Uh, you know, so that is still on the roadmap, of course. Uh, in fact, you may even notice in this round that it's um, there is now a field that shows you how much money you've raised as an individual grantee, uh, which is not yet being populated. So um, we actually have like a Dune Analytics dashboard that we're using to, uh, you know, to share around so that people can see how much they've raised. Uh, I think those are going out today for all three rounds. So, yeah, I mean, definitely nice. uh, very much, very much an alpha experience. Uh, and and I totally agree that that should be a priority. So, I mean, that's exactly the kind of feedback that folks uh, uh, we're hoping to get from people. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you if there's other specific questions or things that have changed about the the user experience, I'm definitely happy to sort of talk it through. Uh, you know, it's it's been a really interesting process from a round operator, round manager point of view as well. And a big part of what we're doing, uh, you know, as the operations team is really trying to document everything that we're doing to make it easier for folks when they. Uh, decide to run their own rounds because you know there's there's always little things that you need to you know uh, you, maybe you didn't think about before you started running the round and you wish you did or uh, you know just like ways that things could go smoother um, yeah so so lots of takeaways lots of lessons learned every day I'm you know documenting more uh, little quirks or little things that uh, you know could be different and and it's definitely interesting having the experience of the previous grants platform before this one. Um, because I, I think people would maybe approach their experience here somewhat differently if they hadn't sort of, uh, you know, built the muscle of sort of doing things the same way over 15 grants rounds uh, leading up to kind of where we are now. Um, you know, and, and some things are, are going to remain the same, but there definitely some things will be a bit different. So, uh, you know, it, uh, it, it, it may have been different if we just sort of started with the platform this way. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think there's lots of uh, takeaways from, from the previous platform of sort of like what... Uh, could be better, could be different, and and definitely sort of like delaying, you know, not holding a GR16 in December gave us a lot more bandwidth to sort of like think that stuff through and talk it through. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm with you. Let's uh, let's bring back the uh, the matching fund estimates. I, I think those are crucial. <laughs> Yay! Let's go. I, I have one more one more question about like I think the other big change is that it's it's much more like voting now. Like there's a ballot. And you have this short list. Can you explain a little bit? Like, like, can I donate to a project and then remove it? It looks like I could actually remove it from my ballot. And then would it get less matching at the end? Like, how does it, how does that work? 
basically the idea there was that we had a lot of folks who like, you know, spent time going through and like looking at a whole bunch of different grants, especially when there was like 2000 plus grants on the platform. Uh, and there wasn't really like a way to bookmark and save grants. So this was like basically a, a combination of feature requests. Um, there was also, I think, the sort of the nomenclature around like voting versus shopping cart uh, has been one for a while that people have been talking about. Like it was a little confusing to sort of think of it as a shopping cart because really you're voting with your wallet, so to speak. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if we've totally nailed it on the way that we're describing that or what that flow looks like. It might even make sense for the, uh, you know, for that wish list to, to be in a separate place than the sort of checkout field, uh, you know, so you could go look at the wish list and, and then sort of move things into the checkout. And that's a separate page. I, you know, it's debatable, um, you know, but uh, the really the gist of it is that you're you're saving a bunch of projects into a short list or a wish list. Um, and then from there, you're you're just adding them all to your cart. And basically, once you've added them to your cart, uh, there is a button to remove them. But that's basically just like, whoops, I didn't mean to add it to my cart. I'll just put it back into the into the list. Um, you know, it, it doesn't uh, affect matching. Really, at that point, it's you're returning to pretty much the same as the previous experience other than the, the matching estimates. Uh, you're just determining how much to give. Uh, you know, that's executing the smart contract and you know, the funds flow directly to the grantee. They're not custodied by Gitcoin anywhere along the way. Uh, and that just counts towards the calculation. Um, the one big difference in terms of how the matching fund calculations are being done uh, is actually as it relates to Passport. Um, because we have integrated Passport, uh, but not in quite the same way that it was done uh, previously, you might remember there was like 50% match, 100% match, 125, 150% match, depending on your trust score. Um, now it's more like a, a qualify, not qualify with a score. Um, and the score uh, brings in a lot of different heuristics. So people are always asking me, like, do I have to, uh, you know, just add one thing to my, you know, how many different things do I have to verify to, uh, uh, to, to get that score? And there is a full breakdown in the knowledge base that, uh, you know, if anybody's interested, you could go look through. I'm happy to share the link. Um, but the, the, the reality is that there's actually like multiple different uh, heuristics that it's taking into account. So like if you add your Twitter account, um, if it's a brand new account, that's different than if it's an older aged account. If you've got lots of followers, it's different than if you don't. Um, you know, basically the idea is to make it harder for people to, uh, you know, to try to, uh, you know, fraud the system in one way or another, pretend that they're somebody they're not. So, you know, you can't just go create a whole bunch of Twitter accounts. It's like, you know, are you actually like, what does your social graph look like? Uh, you know, who are you being followed by? Like, it's, you know, might be different if you're being followed by a bunch of people who are already trusted parties. Um, and, you know, honestly, the the uh, civil defense stuff is is a never ending arms race. Like it's it's constantly changing and evolving. So even the way that it's being calculated now will probably be somewhat different than the way that it's calculated, uh, you know, in the next round or in future rounds. Uh, and one of the neat things about that tool floating around there in, in the open source space is, you know, the way that people can implement it on their own grants rounds or whatever else they want to use Passport for uh, is that you can basically tune those trust scores in whatever way you want uh, based on the various different data points uh, that are being collected. So, yeah, that's that's kind of the idea behind the flow there. Um, whether we should call it a vote or not, uh, you know, or whether it should be called something else, I, I think that's kind of a different issue, but it, it definitely brings up some interesting questions around sort of the underlying philosophy. Uh, but I think the, the kind of the gist of the reason why was like to shift more to this thinking about it as like you're giving your input as to how you'd like to see the funds allocated. Um, as much as you are donating, like we, we do try to emphasize that like it's not necessarily about how much you donate. It's about the fact that like every person's voice matters. Um, and like, you know, that somebody who has 10 times as many dollars shouldn't have 10 times as many votes. Um, you know, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the gist of the thinking anyway. Thank you both of you for, for your questions and for also sharing all this information with, with us. Um, and now actually speaking about all these changes, I would love, I would love to hear from Pranav and Tam, uh, with this in mind, with all this, um, 
changes and things that we've listened uh, been talking about this alpha round for you something changed about the strategy uh, for 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 your grants meaning that um, having in mind the passport or, or all these tools did you change something are you uh, are you trying to communicate something different so um, let's start with Tam uh, and then let's go with Pranav sure um well, first, Ben, thanks for explaining that so well. It actually, um, it is actually very informative. You know, I feel like I'm so heads down on it, moving forward our own initiatives that I very rarely put my head up and like even all the, you know, all of the blog posts and emails and tweet threes, I, I just haven't had time to read them. So that was, that was really helpful. And I really like the idea of like living the ethos of decentralization and Gitcoin being a leader in that. That's so typical of Gitcoin. <laughs> um, Okay, so for strategy, I don't know that I'm the best person, so I'm going to be quick to, to pass this on probably. Um, I'd say, you know, well, let me just actually say a few things about what I found different and maybe the things that I really liked. I always found Gitcoin really difficult to navigate. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I don't know if I'm the only one, uh, but I find their new UX at least to be cleaner. There's some kinks, but, you know, there's expected to be some kinks in an alpha. It, it's just going to get better from here. But I find the focus on these three categories less chaotic, less diffused. And I can really just select, you know, I can decide what category to go into and just so it just feels curated in, in some way. Of course, the increased civil attack resistance using Gitcoin Passport is a big win for for everyone. So I, I actually am really um I, you know, I'm long on the future of what Gitcoin is was doing here with their new inter, with their new systems. And then for strategy, you know, I, somebody told me that it's like if anyone just donates a dollar, you know, it's like because of QF, it, it just the more people that will even donate just a dollar, you know, doesn't have to be big donations uh, matters. So you know, there's the people that um, have Gitcoin Passport set up. And uh, then there's the people that don't. So it's sort of trying to communicate to the people that already have Bitcoin pass, uh, passport set up to be like, just drop a dollar, you know, <laughs> like five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, great, you know, even better. But just a dollar makes a difference. Uh, and then for people who don't have passport set up, you know, helping them, <laughs> helping them get it set up is uh, is beneficial to all of us. So I would say in terms of like strategy, that those are the things that come to my mind. And let me uh, pass to Pranav. Yeah. Hi. Thanks so much. Uh, firstly, again, Ben, uh, absolutely. Each time I hear you, you know, there's more insights there. So uh, love that. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Uh, just as a as a quick note in terms of what I find different, I, I want to separate that into two buckets. The first perspective is just in terms of what the change is all about. And in, in my mind, it's always been that uh, Gitcoin is like one big giant onboarding flywheel. Uh, for the fact that it just every season it onboards this huge new folks from Web 2 onto Web 3. And it does that beautifully. Uh, as, and this infrastructure is now going to be made available uh, to other uh, you know, businesses, projects in the space to leverage. And that I think is going to be a huge help. You know, there, there are n number of projects that we know of who give out grants or who are looking to onboard folks into their ecosystems. And all of them come up with their own versions of this flywheel. Uh, Gitcoin has it down pat, and I think it's about time that it was made available uh, to everybody to just onboard the next billion, probably, onto Web3. So absolutely a huge shout out to the team out there. The other bit that, and again, this is still on the, you know, the 30,000 feet kind of view. The other thing that has really, really come in is, uh, is that we made a virtue out of a necessity. So being an alpha round, we had just like 50 spots. Uh, for projects and uh, we decided to create 10 bundles and that's like um, that's been an amazing experience in the sense of really bringing people together to collaborate and just showing people that even though you're in the same domain maybe oceans maybe uh, you know agriculture uh, maybe mrv there's just still so much collaboration possible it's still absolutely possible to work together to scale up your impact and your effort and your uh, your work uh, so just you know that that aspect of collaboration that has been a necessity to take this forward in the bundles especially and also the fact that individual projects now have to reach out to bundles because they need the bundles to really amplify their voice it's it's been like uh, you know an amazing uh, uh, you know outcome uh, so for sure that that's that's something that i've found interesting in terms of just uh, you know the 
uh, personally speaking of the process for sure it's been a very pleasant experience it grows on you obviously the first time you do it you find it very disconcerting because that's not the way you've been used to it but once you get through it i mean it just seems so intuitive and we've experienced that when we did the you know the earlier uh, unicef round and the other round it just it just seems so smooth uh, and yes i know i'm going to say it aloud for a lot of people who are not voicing it yes the gas fee do hurt uh, but then you know you just got to find the right time to donate and uh, guess what you, you know you should donate donate to as many projects at one time and just uh, you know uh, look for the best time to donate and you know your fees is going to be probably as low as a couple of dollars right and that that's already been shared by folks uh, on twitter uh, so now don't go complaining about the fees just get around to it donate it uh, and yeah let's uh, let's work to build uh, the whole space better thanks and also i know for now that you just recently launched a guide for everyone that wants to donate because i know as tam was also mentioning that um passport is something new i needed to do my passport yesterday and the, and that was uh, an experience just like understanding why i need to connect my twitter why you know like i think that um there is a lot of information that uh, we need to put out there for everyone to understand why Uh, why does this matters? Why to have a more uh, of a decentralized uh, identity to do these matters? So speaking about decentralization, Ben, I would love uh, for you to speak a little bit of uh, how all these tools and how all these uh, new strategies and implementations are leading more and more to uh, decentralized rounds in the sense that one uh, one time or in the future. Uh, whoever wants can all actually use this this uh, technology to to implement their own projects. Yeah, uh, great question. And I mean, I think we're going to see that path look different for different rounds, depending on sort of what their starting point is. Um, but I, I think you know we could almost look at it like a, a funnel or a, a, a ladder, um, you know, towards greater decentralization for each round. Um, and that's kind of how we're thinking about it in the operations team. Like, how do we support each of these different sort of subsets of communities uh, to kind of take more and more control of running their own grants rounds? Um, you know, some like, for example, the DSI round, the decentralized science round that happened uh, in GR15. Um, you know, that was a community that was just like raring to go. Uh, in fact, they wanted to run around in GR14 and just, you know, the pieces weren't all aligned yet for that to happen but like you know they raised their own matching fund uh you know with some support from the fundraising team but they put a lot of the, the effort in themselves and raised a lot of the funding themselves um you know and and really for them it was like just providing support and understanding of how the platform works so uh, i think what we'll see from gitcoin moving forward is like basically that you know we'll try to get it to the point where it's as like plug and play that somebody can just fully run their own round themselves but also have a a sort of suite of services that are available to uh, you know make it possible to support uh you know communities that want to run around um you know so and that'll look different for cause rounds and ecosystem rounds um you know and and i think there'll be a lot of sort of uh, bespoke uh you know sort of examples of this as we move forward But really, the the gist of it is like we're just trying to provide the documentation um, and, you know, the real hands on support where necessary to kind of fill in the blanks for communities that, you know, may want to take on part of running a grant round, but might not have, um, you know, say the uh, the infrastructure for support, like for actually supporting donors and grantees or, um, you know, who might need the additional operational support or might not have the marketing uh, in place or, or whatever it might be. Um, you know, so there, there's lots of different pieces that go into running the round kind of above and beyond the technology. Uh, and we're trying to make ourselves uh, less and less necessary, uh, you know, for for various different rounds as this evolves. Uh, the other thing I think it, that's worth saying is that at the upcoming shelling point in, uh, in East Denver, you know, we're going to be having a lot of conversation with community members about, you know, sort of shaping what the future of grants rounds look like, even which rounds we're running, Um, you know, what, uh, you know, is happening during the sort of the program, um, you know, as we're shifting to this idea of sort of seasons where, like, as you mentioned, we had the UNICEF round, which was, you know, really amazing. And, you know, hopefully it's just the first of uh, uh, of many of these kinds of rounds uh, supporting UNICEF and, and other projects like that, um, uh, you know, as well as a phantom round. And you know, there's going to be a, uh, uh, an optimism round in the not too distant future and, and potentially all kinds of other ones. 
Um, you know, there'll be a question of sort of which ones happen concurrently with the program, which ones are happening at other times of year. To a certain extent, that'll be up to the folks running their own rounds. But also there's some questions about sort of like, you know, uh, how can we be most available, most of service? You know, how much capacity do we have to provide? Um, you know, so those are all things that we're going to be sort of figuring out in real time together. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of the beauty of building in public is like we'll continue to share the thought processes and sort of where we're at on the governance forums and, you know, seek feedback from community. Of course, it is kind of like drinking from a fire hose. Uh, Tam, you sort of mentioned like with all the blogs and all the things. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's hard staying on top of all of this, even as a, a full time Gitcoin employee, uh, let alone being a community member or somebody working on another project or any number of other projects. Uh, you know, some of us uh, there are like Griff, you know, working on, you know, probably 10 different projects at the same time, I'm guessing. Uh, you know, I know Pranav's kind of in a similar boat with all the stuff he's doing with Refi by South. So, you know, I, I think one thing we definitely have to get better at is just like making it easier to find the most important, most prescient, most kind of uh, significant moments, um, you know, and we'll definitely be using social and Twitter spaces and, you know, in the Discord main stage for kind of just open discussions and dialogues. Um, definitely pay attention to the Discord main stage, by the way, with the community calls. We're going to start doing more and more of these kind of uh, open dialogues and discussions. We we actually just had one on uh, the future of the sort of branding of the various different parts of what we're calling the grant stack, uh, which was an interesting conversation to be part of. And, and there'll definitely be more of them. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I think there's there's a lot of different ways this is going to look. But basically... Uh, you know, the question is kind of like what needs to be in place to to support that transition. And, and that's a big part of the kind of what we're trying to get out of this alpha round is like answers to those questions and making sure that we're kind of plugging the right holes, providing the right documentation. Um, and honestly, the peer support thing is is crucial, uh, like seeing like, you know, folks like Pranav putting out guides, uh, you know, Twitter spaces being hosted by community members. Um, you know, I, I think all of that stuff is uh, is is fundamentally important to like the decentralization of, of these rounds. Oh, I see Griff's hand. I'm, I'll, I'll stop talking. Yeah, I, I have I have a few questions about about uh, about the Alpha Grants round and some some cool new features. Like uh, there's this GTC staking feature, which is really interesting. And actually, I see Giveth Jake here. He was telling me his passport didn't qualify. He didn't have enough. Po apps and things that would get him uh, qualified, but can we use GTC staking to actually get pe people qualified? Uh, like, how much does it help, and what does it do? Good question. Uh, so, GTC staking is a really fascinating experiment, uh, and this is definitely one that's got a walkie's uh, uh, fingerprints all over it, along with uh, uh, Connor O'Day and others. Uh, you know, some of the OGs from Gitcoin. Um, and, you know, we're looking at different ways that GTC staking can be sort of useful for these rounds. One of the big uh, things is actually around discoverability of grants. Like, you know, it can be pretty overwhelming when you're looking at a page with like tons and tons of different grants on it. How do you know which ones to sort of focus on? There's a lot to read. Um, you know, so the sort of original use case was like basically using staking uh, as a form of like attestation. Uh, as a way to sort of uh, signal that you think a particular grant should uh, sort of pop up higher in the discoverability. So it's basically a way of saying, like, I think this this one deserves your attention. Um, and I think as we go further down the road of like impact certificates and other forms of attestation, like I think there's going to be a lot of different signals that we could use and potentially all kinds of API plugin opportunities for sort of changing the view that you see. Like maybe you want to see um, you know, the uh, the grants on the climate page that Pranav thinks are important or that Griff thinks are important or uh, or our buddy Ed Bourgeois over there thinks is important. Shout out to Ed, the uh, OG uh, uh, permaculture farmer who I, I see popping up in, on, in all these spaces. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, that's that's kind of one use case. There's some others that people are talking about, but that's kind of the, the primary one right now is like basically uh, staking tokens on particular projects to uh, increase their visibility on the page. Um, you know, so basically you're just locking up tokens. You're not spending tokens. It's, uh, you know, there's no cost associated with it other than gas for transactions, uh, which of course, you know, can be a thing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the idea behind staking. And as it relates to Passport, um, for anybody who was having trouble with Passport yesterday, my understanding was that the back end through Ceramic just got slammed yesterday. 
Uh, we had a ton of people going and setting up passports. Uh, I'm not sure what the latest number is, but it was 120,000 before the round started. It'll be interesting to know what that number is like today, tomorrow, the next day. Uh, funny enough, I uh, was connecting a different wallet uh, and had to verify my passport just because I wanted to demonstrate how to do it uh, on a call yesterday. And and I definitely felt the pain myself. I heard some people waited as much as like three hours before all the verifications went through. Um, so, you know, hashtag alpha life uh, has been my uh, my mantra recently, just like, you know, trying to remember that, like, this all will get better. It'll get smoother. We're just kind of trying to make our way through the alpha round and, and learn from it uh, and just trying to deploy capital and get it at the door. But, you know, the uh, uh, the 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 re yes, there is a one of the stamps for the passport is related to staking GTC. Uh, and there's the potential for lots of other things to go in there. Like as you continue to watch what's available on the passport page, um, like passport did exist in GR15, but there was way less stamps on it. Um, you know, there was way less things that you could connect, connect and verify. It was like bright ID and your Gmail and Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, proof of humanity and PO app. But now there's like a ton more. There's probably two or three times as many uh, different things that you can connect. Um, and, you know, for me, it took connecting two things to, to get approval. I connected my previous Gitcoin donation history, uh, as well as, uh, being a GTC holder. Uh, and that for me got me enough stamps, but like, you know, everybody's kind of, uh, situation will be different depending on the, the sort of, uh, um, the age and, and sort of significance of that particular one. So maybe as one point of advice for anybody thinking about setting up their passport is just like, think like if I'm connecting my Gmail and I'm comfortable doing that, like, is it a brand new Gmail account or is it an old one? If I'm connecting my Twitter, is it a brand new account or is it an old one? Do I have a lot of followers that are web three people or is my community sort of somewhere else? Cause uh, you know, those are the kinds of things that the, that we're taking into account with those passport scores. So it's possible that just the things that, uh, that somebody connected may just not have made their way on chain and actually be readable uh, by the time they're trying to like verify it. Um, so just give it a little bit of time uh, and also a reminder that you have to refresh the score for the score to show up. So after you add and verify the things, you click back, you go to the page uh, where it shows you your score. You have to click the little refresh button and that'll like hopefully update your score. Um, so, yeah, it was a little painful yesterday. Uh, add it to gas fees. Um, you know, I, I see Tam's hand, but I'm, I'm curious to uh, about one thing. I'll just throw one thing and then I'll stop talking. Um, we we had thought about running the the climate round on optimism uh, and Pranav, uh, you know, remember the conversation we had about this, you know, and we landed on staying on mainnet, uh, you know, just like basically there was three options available to us right now, just based on what had been built so far, which was run it on on mainnet, run it on optimism, run it on phantom. Um, and uh, originally we we're planning to run it on optimism, but then, uh, you know, some folks were worried about the extra onboarding uh, you know, extra support. And of course, there's still gas fees for bridging to optimism. So maybe that doesn't solve the problem if people don't already have money on optimism. Uh, but I am curious about people's opinions about that. Uh, it was, uh, I definitely was feeling the pain seeing people say that they, you know, uh, were looking at like $45, $75 gas fees uh, yesterday, which is is definitely not what we were hoping would be the case. We were, we were hoping to sort of uh, at least have some advantage of the bear market to, to have lower gas fees. But uh, I, I don't know if it was us causing all that traffic or some combination of factors. But uh, but yeah, gas fees definitely spiked yesterday. Um, anyway, I'll stop talking. Tam. Yeah, that was also great to hear, actually, because, you know, I am. Um... There's so many of my friends that have never touched Web3 that I want to be like, hey, just, you know, donate, you know, one dollar, five dollars to some of these grants. And I think that the interface is so sleek that they would be able to. And I, and I was wondering about Passport, since you were talking so much about it, you know, my uh, my score is like 29 over 21. I guess 21 is like to reach eligibility, 21.76. I don't know if that's true. But um you know, I was just, I, I was trying to connect everything I could possibly connect because I, I wasn't really sure how many I needed to connect to reach eligibility. So I just tried to do everything at the same time. And then I guess I wonder, um, you know, for somebody who's never touched Web3, who maybe doesn't even have a GitHub account, who doesn't have any tokens, who doesn't have any voting, any snapshot, any pops, any NFTs, you know, I know that there's things like uh, LinkedIn and Gmail accounts, which is probably targeting that particular set of newcomers to Web3. I was wondering, do you, do you happen to know if those two things would be enough to meet the criteria of, um, of, of, um, of 
QF? Good question. Uh, and I think it depends on the individual and those accounts. Uh, and to be honest, I haven't gone deep enough into the weeds of exactly how the score is being tabulated to tell you like exactly how old or sort of like, uh, you know, sort of what your social graph would have to look like. Um, but I, I think that it it is like we have tried to make it possible that somebody who has no Web3 interface or like no previous exist, like, you know, they're not going to have PO apps, they're not going to have NFTs, they're not going to have a bunch of ETH sitting on their wallet or, or GTC. Um, you know, so the, it, it is possible to qualify for matching just using legacy web uh, connections in Passport. But the exact configuration of exactly which ones uh, is somewhat dependent on the individual uh, and sort of what their accounts look like. Uh, you know, definitely what we're trying to avoid is somebody being able to just like set up a Gmail, set up a Twitter, set up a LinkedIn, uh, you know, and have a bot do that a thousand times and then, you know, go vote for their grant or whatever it might be. Uh, but you know the uh, uh, it, but yes, there there is a path for uh, you know for anybody who uh, you know doesn't have those pre existing things to to still get uh, to qualify for matching. Um, and yeah, I mean the one thing that I think is unfortunate in the in the user experience right now is you just don't know if you're still waiting for something to be verified. Um, so like I just re recommend to people to just kind of like walk away from it, go do something else for a bit, come back later. You know, uh, especially if you're you're also looking at higher gas fees and you're thinking about donating in the middle of the day, you know, maybe like start your passport setting up earlier in the day, come back a little later, check and refresh and, and see if your score has gone up because uh, it can be a little maddening if you're just sitting there watching it, waiting and, it, and nothing's happening. Um, of course, we are talking about it with the devs and, and hopefully, um, you know, we can make that all move faster. But just uh, I, I think it just got slammed yesterday. So hopefully it's not as bad today or, or throughout the rest of the round. Well, thank you so much, Ben, for all these uh, advice for everyone that's here listening. We've been talking about these Gitcoin round, alpha rounds for almost an hour. We've talked about the difference between the other rounds, what makes this round different, why is targeting naming for more decentralized technology, um, and also having in mind that all these Web3 innovations take time to get better, to get a smooth UX experience. Um, we know that we all need to be patient, especially uh, speaking about uh, supporting projects and donating. So um, I would love to also welcome Lauren that's here. Hey, Lauren, and I would love just to end this conversation with a round from everyone to talk about their projects what comes next for each of you why should people donate to you um what what you've been working on in from and since the last round so let's start with lauren to just um jump in and i know that you're kind of like in a hurry packing and everything so lauren do you want to start speaking in a, uh, about giveth Oh, sure. Maybe I'll actually pass it to Griff to speak about Giveth. I was trying to get up here before because I had so many thoughts and comments. It was really great, Ben, to just like hear from you a little bit more about like how things are working and how Passport's working and like all the different things you're working on from the Gitcoin perspective. I was like, I had so many more questions, but um, I'll pass it over to Griff because he's, he's got the best Giveth shill. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I... Def so we're just if we're just chilling giveth i mean please support us please donate a dollar to us we are uh we're definitely uh trying to support like tr more traditional nonprofit and impact driven people making an effort uh in in you know all around the world whether it's community currencies in kenya or or um you know uh, eco villages in costa rica there's all sorts of cool projects on giveth that are that are uh able to raise money uh, around the world uh, because of our work. So uh, please consider donating to us during the Gitcoin grants round. And uh, you know, our goal is to get, is to go evolve past donations and eventually a lot, enable these, these groups to actually create regenerative systems around the value they create uh, because we know that they're creating real value. And so, uh, and we, we're confident that you can actually create economies that can support the people creating those value that value in a in a in a better way than just donations so uh yeah please consider supporting us and and we'll make sure to make every dollar count i'll throw it over to pranav thanks so much for that griffith uh and uh yeah just uh 
thank you so much for having all of us and for this opportunity to uh, you know to listen to ben speak i just love that always one of my favorite parts frankly but i just want to again give a huge shout out to a couple of projects out there and again in the spirit of giving uh, uh, i just want to make a huge shout out to uh, two bundles one is the emerging economies bundles uh, they definitely need help uh, for sure they need your love and then there's uh, you know uh, the whole uh, climate advocacy bundle and that's another one that we really need to put out there because hey, for hey, the fact, you know, really quick yeah. can you tell us what bundles are i don't even know what the, where where do you find these bundles what are they sure uh, so the bundles there are 10 bundles uh, if you'll go to the grants explorer page you'll see them listed uh, and there will be the word bundle in them so you can very clearly identify if you click open the description of the bundle you'll find a small blurb about each of the projects in the grant uh so you have uh, an ample opportunity to understand what uh, that bundle is all about but just to uh, you know at the top level the bundles have all been put together because of specific themes so there's an oceans bundle there's an emerging economies bundle so there's 10 of them unfortunately i don't remember all of their names offhand and that's also because the bundles being these very live active groups of people have turned creative and they've given some amazing names to the work that they're doing so i would just encourage each one of you to go out and have a look at these bundles there's some amazing projects in there i mean if if you were to ask me i would say that if there is something that you want to donate for this round you should definitely donate to each of those 10 bundles uh they really need everybody's support uh and it's pretty simple when you're donating to one bundle you know that that money is going to split across uh, the active participants there are multi sig wallets at behind so for sure everybody is going to you know do the right thing in that sense so you can rest assured of that the 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 gitcoin team has uh, ensured that uh and yeah I, it's uh, just to again come back to the fact that uh you know rifa by south is uh, actually dripping to uh, an event that's going to happen uh, in india called rifa gokarna and we are doing this in association with three other projects uh from india so uh i would encourage you to just uh, have a look at refi by south to understand you know what 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 we are doing and just have your support there uh, frankly i'll be honest with you i always find it a little challenging to shill uh, on a platform like this because you know i'm it's an honor to be here and to speak to you uh, and to share with you so you know i i find it disconcerting to specifically talk about my project uh, but yeah uh, i mean please donate to all the projects i mean when you are at it it's just going to cost you the same gas fee right So yeah just just do this do the right thing absolutely uh, I'll I'll stop there just leave you with the last three words Rifa by South thanks I'll grab it from here and just give Pranav some praise for saying that I uh, I agree and that's also what I'm hoping to do is to donate to as many projects as I can but I do want to just share some of what I think is important for people who care about um you know regenerative finance you know common stack has been around for a couple of years now I've been with them for two and a half years now and we've been like diligently working on researching and developing design patterns based on Eleanor Ostrom's principles of governing commons you know we have this collaborative economics methodology for a collaborative approach to um proposing and you know submitting and voting on parameters of the economy it's never been done before we have cultural frameworks that weave these these governing the commons principles into the fabric of a community we have a suite of tools that we've either developed like augmented bonding curve conviction voting and the praise reputation and reward system or we've selected because they help support um this sort of regenerative you know commons economy and we do a lot of research and we do a lot of applied research you know uh our first uh commons was the TEC the token engineering commons we've learned so much and we're taking what we've learned there and iterating to the next version of a commons and now we get to partner with this amazing group uh hopefully if we get enough funding uh regen re, uh, sorry uh refi dao they've done some cool things they've supported over 152 founders um they've supported 70 community managers they have a news a newsletter of 100 uh, 1700 subscribers and they've co-launched the 1 million grant pool with future quest solo polygon and others so i feel like the two of us together have a real chance to see this commons incubator go live 
Um, we have a really strong track record of delivering things. We get things done. We can make like we can make it so that any region anywhere in the world can very easily launch their own tokenized economy, following the like governed by the principles of Eleanor Ostrom, and able to support local regenerative finance initiatives right where they're standing. And this is so powerful, and I want this so bad. But uh, yeah, so I, I really hope we get to we get uh, this funding. And so, so that's the that's the end of it. I mean, I think in the larger scheme of things, you know, this is this is only seventy five k. It'll cover the next three months of our work, but I think the impact of this will be tens or hundreds of millions of dollars of new ideas and you know people coming up with like, being able to come up with new ways to to create regeneration in their local areas and sharing that information with a wider refi network uh, that refi Dow is building. Thank you, uh, Tam. Great partnership. Uh, I think that we're all in Give It That very excited about this collaboration. Ben, any final words before we close the space? Just raise my hands to all of you for all the amazing work that everybody's doing. Uh, you know, everybody here on stage is like just so dedicated to like putting tools in people's hands and empowering people and making public goods a reality in our world a better place. Uh, it just fills me with hope and joy to to sort of be surrounded by so many positive people working so hard to, to make good things happen. Uh, it's really a breath of fresh air, uh, you know, in the world that we, we just need more of that kind of positivity and creativity. Uh, so yeah, just, just thrilled to be, to be part of all this with you. Um, and I'll say that just anybody who's like, you know, uh, in, in out there, like looking for answers and solutions, trying to figure things out in the Gitcoin grants round, um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out, but I'll also say there's some great telegram groups floating around, um, like there's a, a main one for the climate round. There's one just for the, uh, for the alpha round itself. Um, and really the beauty of those spaces is like peer support. You know, uh, the, a lot of the time, the best answers come from community members, uh, you know, from other grantees, from other donors. A lot of the time you'll find the answer faster that way than like, you know, trying to go through our discord and support channels. Those are definitely there. You know, we do have a system for creating tickets and there's great people helping, uh, and, you know, obviously, uh, you know, reach out to me if you're if you're having issues or there's something you don't understand or Lauren, if you had any follow up questions, feel free to DM me later. Happy to talk, uh, you know, but long story short, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, the peer support really is the magic and the community really is the magic. So, like, you know, go and go and connect with other people who are part of the round. Love uh, all the talk of bundles. Uh, you know, really, that was a way that we were just trying to include more people. And it's turned into something really amazing. Uh, you know, yesterday on, on one of these spaces, we had two different people who were individual grantees who were like the top 40 grantees in the last climate round uh, who said they had bundle FOMO because uh, there was so much cool stuff happening in the bundles, which I, I just thought was amazing. Uh, you know, it was, and already one of these bundles we heard is, uh, is creating their own DAO. Uh, you know, so I, I, I think the kind of cross pollination uh, is going to be really the, the, the place to watch. That's going to be where the emerging amazing stuff is coming out. Um, you know, so just stay tuned to like kind of what's going on in those bundles uh, and like look for ways to, to collaborate and coordinate with others in the round. Uh, you know, the, the, as Pranav says, maybe I'll just end it with the, with quoting Pranav, uh, you know, people come to Gitcoin for the funding, but they stick around for the community. Uh, and I think that's absolutely true. So, uh, yeah, just just thrilled to be here with all of you. Uh, and uh, let's keep the conversation going. And, and uh, you know, I, I think 2023 is going to be an amazing year for for public goods and Web3. We're all bullish for 2023 as uh, the year for public goods and Web3. Thank you so much, Tam, Lauren, Pranav, Ben, uh, Griff. We're hosting a donation party because we on Giveth made our homework and we're just going to be there guiding you. If you want to support any of the projects that were here in this Twitter space, join our Discord. You'll find the link on our um bio on twitter so thank you so much i'm going to close with some music and have a great day